Well, the Courage Canada trail ride has been going on in the Minburn Innisfree area since 2004. And that's a tradition that has continued on because of the inspiration of one man. Nick Nielsen has more. <laughs> this is Curtis Anderson. In June of 2002, Anderson was riding bulls at the Pinoca Stampede where he was bucked off and rammed twice in the head. After being in a drug-induced coma for three months, he's been gaining his abilities back and started the Courage Canada trail ride to raise awareness for severe brain injury. Basically starting from scratch, I was a year, week, a week short of a year in therapy. Since its start 13 years ago, the Courage Canada trail ride has raised over $167,000 and it's all gone to a few different places including the Canadian Pro Sports Medicine Team, the Make-A-Wish Foundation and to brain injury survivors and their families. Longtime rider and friend of Anderson, Gwen Jacobson, says this ride supports a cause that is just too important to miss out on. Because I believe in it. I really do. I think it's helped not only Curtis, but it's helped a lot of individuals that's had troubles through over the years. Anderson has always been a cowboy at heart, taking a lot of inspiration from people like Johnny Cash and Hank Williams. As a result, he's taken to writing cowboy poetry and music and has relearned how to play guitar. As well, he's been taking the reins as a motivational speaker and a safety advisor. Anderson says the most important thing is to keep raising awareness about brain trauma. It's, you can't put a number on how much awareness that has raised over the years and that's the bottom line. Johnny Cash said it best, I have mountains to climb and always will. The mountains I have climbed in my recovery have taught me that what you put in is what you get out. Nick Nielsen, New Cap News. Sunny skies in Bud Miller Park made for a perfect time to get covered with a plethora of colors. The fourth annual Color Within 5K Run and Walk drew in a record 500 people, boating well for projects to help the Bee Fisher residents. Josh Ryan has more with the colors and sounds. After braving wind and rain a year ago, participants at the Color Within 5K enjoyed a triumphant return with better weather, additional forms of color blasting, and plenty of new faces. People are starting to catch on to this fundraiser and uh, they have so much fun when they come out, they like to return. Every year, yes, with my parents, because we're the happy family today. As were many other groups, featuring all ages and a few other species. A lot of the people that come out are their families and it's so nice to see, especially the you know, some of the younger boys and girls running. And Rochelle is a runner, so it falls in nicely. B. Fisher hopes to raise fifteen to twenty thousand dollars this year in order to improve a number of services, including transportation. We're looking to purchase a new van. Uh, one is twenty years old, so it's time to add another one to the fleet. Our, our people are aging and uh, uh, more and more are in wheelchairs, and so that's a good way for them to get out in the community. And the community at the Color Within 5K continues to attract newcomers, who enjoyed their first experience going from white <laughs> to rainbow. I think it's really awesome because so many people love it and they're at the same time doing it for a good cause. Josh Ryan, New Cap News. And the sunshine brought out people of all ages to the Lloyd Rescue Hall today for the second annual Emergency Measures Day and Fire Hall Open House. From fire truck and ambulance displays to Paw Patrol celebrity guests, the day was a hit and a great way for families to see what really goes on when rescue teams are on scene of an emergency. It's just a lot of fun to show people what's out there and it's great for us to see the excitement the kids have around seeing emergency vehicles. It doesn't get old for kids, uh, they love that kind of stuff. And for the adults, even better to see what's out there servicing the community. The adults are interested in it too, so a great opportunity for us. There were plenty of activities and displays for people to watch and take part in, with rescue team members wowing the crowd with the jaws of life in action. But it was four-year-old future firefighter Levi who won over the hearts of the crowd while getting hands-on practice with the hose. And he was dressed for the occasion. His mom Jenna brought him to the open house as a way to say thank you to the first responders and show him firsthand the important role they play in the community. For him to get, kind of get to know what these people do and to feel safe instead of scared. 
um, and he really wants to be a fireman so <laughs> he brought his little outfit so yeah I wanted to kind of show him what really goes on and to feel safe and comfortable with all the hard work that they do. And although little Levi may look the part of a future firefighter, he may have another career path in mind. What do you want to be when you grow up? A policeman. This is New Cap Sports. Well, the sun came out on Friday and it was a wonderful day for the Lloyd Minster Comprehensive High School to host its seven rugby tournament with both Baron boys and girls competing. Although the placement weren't, although their placement wasn't exactly what they had hoped for, the teams are improving and just on time. Here's our Lance Phillips with more. Sixteen teams descended on Armstrong Field and unfortunately for both Barons teams, a berth in the finals wasn't meant to be. The boys team finished sixth of eight, but the result is still sufficient given the group's familiarity in the sevens game. The week before this, I think we went to uh, Edmonton, we played sevens there. Uh, we weren't too familiar with it, especially with having uh, a lot of new players in it. And then um, just from you know, watching a few other national teams and thinking about last week, we have uh, just increased our knowledge and just awareness of playing sevens. You know, my goals coming into here was for the boys to get some skill development in. But really, it's now about preparing for provincials. So I wanted them to have fun, to get some skill development, and to stay healthy. Because we need to stay healthy for the next two weeks. So, Concerning for the Barons boys is a lack of depth. But the team remains confident despite its 1-3 and three finish Friday. The team has overachieved in every game that we've played uh, this year. I was telling you earlier, I mean, we're playing against teams that are bigger and more athletic and yet still beating them or competing and, you know, coming up with a, a close loss. Even this last game was a good example. That was a, a really well coached and athletic team that, you know, frankly, we wanted every player to get on the field and that was maybe the difference in the game. The girls showed better results than their male counterparts, also holding bragging rights in the fastest runner race. I honestly didn't think I'd win, like, because there's, I know there's, like, faster girls on my team than me, but for some reason, Mr. Gillandini picked me, and I thought I wasn't actually going to win, but then I was, like, way ahead of them, and I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm actually doing this. The boys struggle with defense, but on the girls' side, the struggle is more complicated. Good quality opponents to play, on, play against, so that way we can work on some of the things that we need to work on. When we go to provincials, it's a lot different game, and in our area, we don't really have the same style of opponent that we are going to face when we go to provincials. Obviously, we still have issues on our uh, on our gameplay, but we're doing like much better. We we learn from our mistakes from these games, and we keep improving. The girls' third place finish Friday has the team feeling like all the work put in should pay off in provincials. Very happy with our six, our um, current preparation for the coming provincials, and I'd love to see the girls get a medal. I think they're a team that could qualify for a provincial medal, and it'd be great to see them come home again. Lance Phillips, New Cap Sports, Lloydminster.